can actually yeah you love this chart yeah this is triangle right can you see my screen yeah so um yeah i i see kind of you know um not a huge attendance today so i should have communicated this um but but let's uh, you know continue with this and we can have feedback from people later on so in presentation all right um hi everyone this is dipi here uh, so what i wanted to what i was discussing with some of the folks here um, in the group and what i thought of initiating uh, in this uh, you know session we have is a proposal for launching a mini series and before getting into the technical you know actual problems uh, i just want to spend uh, initial 5 10 minutes to let everybody know what we are proposing and uh, the hope is that at the end of this uh, you know we can get some feedback on what people think and we can plan the logistics for scheduling this uh, type of you know series accordingly um and uh, i would admit that i i volunteered for the series last week um but you know the time wasn't uh, i realized that it needs much more time to prepare for every session so so take this today's session as a glimpse of what we plan to cover um and uh, yeah we'll go from there and i have basically today's session split in two parts one is where i'll be you know uh, talking about few things and the other thing is more of an interactive session where i the way i'm thinking about is that if we are 25 of us here then each one of us will be able to participate and not just like one or two people coding so let's see how that turns out but uh, yeah so that will be the split about 30 minutes 30 35 minutes for the second part and for the first one we'll spend rest of the time so uh, the idea for this and and i see some chats coming up if there is a question for me uh, some you can speak up that would be great uh, so for this mini series the idea is that I was hoping we can have a fast track preparation guide for the engineering interviews. Um, and by fast track, I mean about two to three months of you know time duration. So if you are in a time crunch and you if you have something coming up, uh, what is the, you know, how should you kind of giving you a guidepost on how to prepare for those interviews? Um, and you may ask that, like for those of you who are attending our sessions or who even those of you who are new, uh, so we have already have a lot of sessions in, practice, uh, in operation, right? Um, I have four of them listed here. Hopefully I didn't miss any other one. But the question is, how is this mini series supposed to be different? And uh, the answer to that comes from that uh, recognizing some of the challenges that I mean, it's coming from a bit of my personal experience that the challenges that I have felt in the past when I gave interviews and while each of these sessions here is super helpful, but I also feel the need for addressing one more perspective, uh, which is what this mini series will provide. And what that perspective is that it's coming from these ideas, right? If you're in a time crunch, like if you look at lead code practice, which happens every week. You practice three questions from lead code. You have the questions in advance, uh, 24 hours in advance. <clears throat> and uh, you can come prepared, or even if you just want to sit through, that's up to you. Uh, CTCI, uh, this session, uh, you know, where Santosh was presenting dynamic programming questions, and we also have mock interviews. So in my view, like these are excellent resources but they also require, you know, like they're more suitable. Like if you if you want to practice on a continuous basis, these are really good, right? Um, or if you need discussion on questions, people are there to really walk you through questions. But the challenge I sometimes face is if I have a very tight window where I want to prepare, then the amount of material I have online is huge and it is very intimidating. 
right? To what to pick, what not to pick. And I might spend time like, you know, uh, solving 20 questions on lead code, all falling across two, three categories. So whereas I might just totally miss on the other styles of algorithms. So this is what I had in mind with this mini series that if we can come together and, you know, identify some algorithmic patterns um, and be proficient in solving, in identifying those patterns. And then, you know, of course, nothing beats practice, right? The more you practice, that's how you'll get good at it. So, so these are like complement, you know, like supporting sessions, I would say. None of them can be enough by itself. Um, yeah. So that is, I just wanted to give a context for what we are thinking about for this mini series. And the thing, I, uh, last point I mentioned here is retention of ideas. Uh, for me, sometimes when I'm listening uh, and I am, uh, at the end of the problem, like for me to really pause and say, okay, what is the big takeaway from this problem that I can keep in mind and move forward? Right. Sometimes I don't give myself enough time for that. And uh, yeah, so that kind of, you know, sometimes even if the similar question comes up, I may not uh, catch it. Um, now, I don't know like how relatable it is to uh, those of you here. Maybe it is, it, it is definitely a bit subjective here, the concerns I'm raising, but uh, I hope there is, I mean, if people here feel that there is similar challenges that they do face from time to time, then this can be one thing we can explore together, uh, mini series. Uh, yeah. And this is the kind of uh, categories and patterns I was talking about. So uh, core data structures that are addressed in interviews, and these are the, you know, some category of algorithms uh, I think they pretty much cover everything, uh, but maybe if I missed one or two, we can add. But this is how I'm thinking of, you know, if we can split topics or I can cover, you know, um, as a continuous, like a playlist sort of, um, and we should go over some problems in each category. Any questions on anything here? Yeah, I think this is perfect, you know, so we're covering all of these categories. Yeah, but like yeah. I said, you know, it has to be supported by like, you know, practice, nothing really beat practice. Today, I thought of covering, uh, you know, array, like the simplest data structure here, where yeah. you're given some input data, and you don't need to, you might say that if I'm given an array of numbers, I can model it as a graph, or I can model it as tree, right, based on the given problem. But that's not the problem set I'm looking at today. I'm looking at that you're given a list and you just keep it as a list, a simple array, and you have algorithms on top of it. So which is category one to four here, I have in mind. Um, but as you would see here, right, if I go into recursion, you have to practice questions, right? Um, but it comes back to the point that if you are limited on time, what is the minimal set you can practice? Uh, that's that's the goal. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, makes sense. Yeah. So, uh, just some disclaimers here. Uh, the list I presented here is subjective, of course, right? It's based on uh, you know what I thought was interesting or what I would like to cover, um, but um, it is subject to change and it's not comprehensive by any means. And you may ask that what is the criteria I use for picking the problems? And uh, the, these are the three uh, things I have in mind, right? Usually in interviews, you are judged on your showcasing the logical progression of your thoughts, right? How are you going from one simple solution, brute force, to the next optimized solution? How are you further optimizing it? So based on your practice, you might come up with the you know, highly optimized solution right away. Uh, but uh, in general, when you're given a new problem, uh, this is, I think, a nicer way to showcase your thought process. And the second, coding proficiency. So the patterns I'll talk about today for arrays, you, uh, the first pattern itself, uh, where I talk about that the problem is very simple, right? Like when you read the problem, you'll be like, oh, this is like 
super easy but uh, for me personally like when i started you know sitting and writing the actual code as if i'm writing it in in, in an interview you know stumbling across like small things that makes me pause and be like oh how do i play with these indexes and uh, so to me that is a critical thing because if a question is very simple um that might be a warm up question right like some companies ask only one question in a single round some ask like two questions one is a warm up question which you are supposed to do very quickly in the past when i applied for internships i i did come across the scenario where i was asked two questions in a 45 minute interview and the first one was fairly simple that they expected me to just you know finish in like 5 10 minutes um and then second one is builds on it um so so this is very important right algorithm this is talking about simple algorithm but test your proficiency in actually coding and translating that algorithm into code and the third category i have uh, is this clever solutions to seemingly simple problems uh i have you know, we see these problems right where they employ some tricks and if you know them you know them uh at least i cannot you know come up with when i notice those solutions there is no way i could have thought of that so it's more like if i have seen something similar or done that question that would be there so this is the category where i feel that it's kind of interest based if i really want to explore a question during my practice uh, it's good but i personally don't focus too much on this because there is no end to this and uh, yeah so so that's that's my categorization here okay so let's let's start with the actual session today uh like i said i am planning a 30 to 45 minutes i'll see you know uh, how the part 1 goes so i have uh, come up with an active learning activity so we'll take that later on but these are the five patterns i thought that kind of cover most well i did thought of another category here for arrays because dynamic programming like uh, what you were doing santosh right that is also an array right and we were trying to do this dp approaches so that can be another i mean i can put it in a dynamic programming category but it can also one can argue that it is also an array based question uh but these were the categories i had in mind so the first one is where i was talking about coding proficiency so the question would be very simple to come up with an algorithm but uh, when you start coding how quickly can you write you know uh, good code and you know make like there may be points where you start getting confused about indexes and uh, that that takes time and and uh, for me personally coming from my experience it kind of sometimes lowers my confidence that if i start you know fumbling across those areas so so that's um, so that's one uh, set of problems we can you know to practice then contiguous subarray or sliding window is another commonly used pattern um two pointers approach uh this is something i think a lot of us here are very comfortable with uh, you're given like array sorted or duplicates or negative numbers how do you deal sometimes like while i was doing a question i came up with a solution which i thought was good but then i realized uh, basic uh, like how do i move from one naive solution to a better solution with a reasoning right i don't want to have random jumps about uh, you know oh i came up with this algorithm then second algorithm and so on so this thing helps right that you are explaining that i'm doing this because it's sorted and all of that um the other yeah last category is very open uh, i'll show one question for it but this is very wide open uh, so let's let's talk about the first one like i said this is requires playing with indexes and uh, the benefit of that is uh, if i sh like uh, if you look at any of these questions like if you look at specifically first question you can very easily do it in like you know having additional array but uh, when you play with indexes and you try to you know not move the values around them then it gives you in place algorithms and which is definitely helpful for space complexity 
Um, now you would see here that I have taken a very, very small subset of problems, right? If you go on lead code or any other portal, there are like, you know, just on lead code, there are very good and about at least 30 or 40 questions uh, you can find on arrays. Um, so the field is wide open. Uh, uh, we'll just, you know, cover parts of them. So, so let, let's start with quickly the first one. Um, I think given the level of, you know, the given the practice you all are having, these might be the easiest problems you would see. But I want to focus here on patterns, like my key takeaways after solving these problems. So, so, so let's do this one, right? Uh, would somebody like to just talk about the approach? Uh, how would you? We'll go about it. So for a brute force would be like, you know, if we are allowed to take extra space, right? So actually we take the last three elements and put it before and then just copy the rest. Uh, okay, so you're saying take an auxiliary array, whatever right. is the k, k number of elements, mm -hmm. them, replace them, put them in front, and then move everything right. Yeah. Uh, sure. So, yeah, that is definitely a, you know. Uh, one thing I did notice, so like you said, Santosh, this is, you know, first solution, like very naive, and we know that it's going to use extra space. Right. And what I noticed while implementing was that um, I'll show you the solution, but um, when I started coding, I realized that how the shifting, like they're playing with some tricks with, you know, identifying the right index, because if you pick the last three elements and put it here, you have to, you know, keep track of what was the original value, right? So that you can move it. Yeah. You take five, six, seven, and if you move them here, right? Five, six, seven, you lose one, two, three, right? Yeah, we'll override that, right? Yeah. Right, right. So you want to just make sure that you save them and that, that and if I um, make K as N minus one, right? Like it's a long array, you know, let's say thousand elements. And I say K is just as an example, 900, right? Then the overhead of saving all that data becomes almost like order of N, right? Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, definitely, I mean, just taking it logically, that is one. Um, any other ideas? Uh, I mean, you can save those three elements to the right, right? I mean, like, you can rotate this place. Yeah. Right. And remaining you can rotate and then you can rotate. So that will also give so when you say rotate you mean like reverse this or yeah reverse reverse yeah reverse right. right right so it's like reverse this so this will give you four three two one this will be seven yeah. five um and then you just do the whole yeah, yeah. so oh, oh. solution so i don't know let me see if uh, i had a little different one but uh let you are saying some uh, Shashank, like if I do four, three, two, one, and seven, six, seven, six. no reverse, then tired. Yeah, no reverse, then tired. Okay, yeah, okay, that's cool. And I honestly did not think of the solution on my own. <laughs> um, no, no, it's a standard algorithm. I mean. Uh, if you know, then only otherwise it will be. Right, like I couldn't even, I understood uh, when they shared, it's when one of the solutions I tried, but yeah. I couldn't even catch the intuition behind it. Like I couldn't see it coming uh, given this. Uh, so this is one also falls in the category of clever solutions, right? Um, that, yeah, it's, it's an interesting insight. So, uh, yeah. And it's actually we are uh, dividing k by uh, length of the array by k and whatever mod you are getting. So mod we are reversing that side and quotient we are reversing this side. And then the entire thing. 
defining how they came up with this and that yeah, yeah. good reasoning to say that why they are doing it but uh, like coming back to that thinking of this approach right either uh, you know, it it is a little clever right rather than very intuitive unless you are yeah, yeah. very it's on the top I mean, of maths yeah. yeah the mo uh, the modulus is uh, uh, four here and you are taking the first four elements from the left and rotating it is that the one right so we reverse the first four and then we reverse the remaining or you can either, either the way i thought of this was case 3 right so i just you know basically i know i have to shift right so i take the last k elements and i just reverse them and then i reverse the rest of the array right and then i just reverse the whole that would it matter if you the question was instead of rotate to the right rotate to the left would the same approach work uh i don't think the direction i think i'm not sure let's let's start right if it's rotate to the left then basically uh, we are saying if i do 3 2 1 and then 7 6 5 4 Yeah, this seems to take some. Yeah, it's gonna work. Yeah. Yeah. It's just that which direction? Yeah, which direction? Like first k elements you pick, right? If you are reversing to the left, then you pick the k from the left, right, starting from the beginning. And if you are rotating to the right, then you pick k from the right. Okay. Thanks. So yeah. So let me. So we talked about few approaches here, right? One is this reversal technique, then the auxiliary array, and of course the other idea is that you can also shift it step by step, right? So it's k equals three. If I do one rotation, uh, it will be you know seven will come in front, and it will be seven one two three four, and then I do another round, um, move it by one more unit. and then one other round right so it's like three iterations and i can do it that way also make sense yeah one by one rotation right yeah yeah, yeah. so uh so one one question um yeah. for the earlier uh, 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 rotation that you mentioned like uh, from the left yeah. and from the right what happens if k is greater than n yep 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 that's good uh, in its length of the array uh, what happens yep. right so let's think about that that's a good question right so if n is 7 right and i say i want to rotate by i don't know 14 right so what do you think like we should do you don't need to rotate anything because remainder will be zero yep uh, you can take the modulo <laughs> yeah you take yeah. modulo yeah that will be the better way of doing it right yeah so in this case it won't but if k is 13 right right yeah. So then you only need to rotate by one unit, yeah. not one. Is it one? No, not one. Six times you six, have to six, six, right? Oh, yeah. six. Yeah. Six. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. That was something actually. I'm glad you pointed out, but when I was doing the question, I think you know accounted for that case. I realized later, but yeah, that is. So in general, when we are doing these questions, right? we are used to checking like the bounds of array if array has one element what if k is negative all of that uh, but this is another test case right what if k is one what i want to do quickly is um, yeah show you the so my take away from this when i talk about patterns right when i finished this question my Uh, the takeaways i did from this uh, here was 
it was a good insight for me to know about that reversal algorithm, but uh, that was it, right? I know it, move on. I didn't really capture anything like that I could directly apply to others. Um, so it was good knowledge for me. Uh, but what I actually took from this question was uh, the, the hold I need when I start coding and I'll, when I show you the code, I'll, I'll highlight the, the place where I actually stumbled a bit with indexes. And when I talked about this approach of doing it one step at a time, this seems like super simple, right? That you should be able to just code in you know, very easily. Um, so to me, I think this is one area we should spend maybe, you know, practice few problems, get very comfortable with actually playing with indexes. Um, and let me just bring up the question to highlight it. And the third takeaway for me here was um, uh, how to analyze this complexity, right? We'll see how the complexity of this reversal is um, uh, different from, you know, the step-by-step -step approach. Uh, yeah, basically to reason something along those lines. So these are, um, everybody can see the lead code screen? Yes. Okay. So these are the four different like um, things I wrote, right? So first one, the first and second, both are about rotating it in case steps, like one at a time. But what was interesting was that I, in the first solution, I started by traversing the array from the beginning, right? So if I want to rotate by one step, then I push everything, uh, you know, I start moving one to this position, and then two to, you know, the third place and so on. And you would notice that, of course, I would need to uh, save the old value or the current value before I replace it, right? Before I move one to this index, array index one, I need to make sure that I save two, right? So I am not sure if I'll be able to really articulate uh, or it may be just, you know, my stuff that I got stuck at it. Um, it's not like a universal thing that everybody would get, but uh, I did for a second, I was like, you know, kind of stumbling between, I didn't use this thing. So I was trying to save the previous value and then overwriting the value. And there was a bit of, you know, a uh, few seconds I took like to, see that I was missing the step. And, uh, but what's, what's important, I want my takeaway from this exercise from first- hey, ADP, could you please increase the font a bit? Oh, sure. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, 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 okay. Thanks for highlighting. So is this good? Oh. Yeah, this is good. This is good, yeah, thank you. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Okay. So, so the point here is that in the first solution, uh, when I start from beginning and I have to do this bookkeeping of every value that I replace, it will work of course, but you would see that uh, this other approach where, uh, uh, where I'm doing much less bookkeeping uh, and why? Oh because here I'm starting the array traversal from end, right? So if you look at, um, go back to this uh, problem here. So if I start moving, if I'm shifting, um, if I'm shifting one element here and I start from the end, right? I just need to save seven because I need to move it in the front. Rest everything is just like move one position to the right, right? I don't need to keep any additional bookkeeping. Does everybody see that? Like if I start yeah. from the last element. Um, so this becomes very easy. You don't have to, at the time of interview, play with all oh, this indexes and all that. So uh, this was an interesting side for me to keep in mind that uh, uh, when I'm thinking of whether I should start from the beginning or the end, right? Um, yeah, so that was one. And then, yeah. So complexity wise, you would see that. So what do you think would be the complexity of this? Can I do it step by step? 
it will be still o of n right uh, o of n sure you can say that uh, eventually it will be o of n but i think a little this, more size would be n times k n times k and uh, yeah. you can't say eventually o of n right because uh, uh, it 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 varies yeah, depend on the input yeah and if k is almost like minus 1 right then it will become like n n square yeah. It's going to be n squared here because k can go up to other. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yes. So, so, but, but if k, k is more, you know, then we can actually do it the other way, shifting, right? No, yeah. but k is less. It's just one less than n, right? Mm -hmm. but, but I think the, the n main minus like, Yeah. So the main thing is that you're trying to tell the worst case complexity in terms of these notations. So k can no. be as n. So definitely n squared. Yeah. No, but if k is n, then there is no point in computing, right? No, not then, n. But... Think of it n minus one, right? N minus one, basically. Yeah. But then it will be only one rotation again because we just do the reverse way. No, no, no rotation. The reverse way. Right? Even I mean, n length array and rotating n times it will become same. Why? So why to rotate it then? No, no, no. That is true. I am not. We are jumping right to optimize solution. I am just brainstorming about if I do it step by step. Okay. Okay. Then it isn't was... it n square because k could be greater than n. If k is greater than n, then yeah, and then we are going to right? n square, right? K is going to be maximum n minus one, right? If k is greater than n, then we are taking it. We are modularizing, right? K is equal to k percent. Yeah. So at most k will be equal n. Yeah. Right. Order of. Um, Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So the complexity with this approach, these two approaches, where I do it step by step, it can be order of n minus k, right? Which can be eventually order of n square. And then if I do it in the for the reverse one, right, which I did here, um, I thought this can be um, order of n, right? Yeah, three pass. Yeah, yeah. This way, it kind of you know makes showcases your thought process that how you're thinking of it. Um, I mean, I I would love to hear what you guys think, but if I jump on this directly, I would think that somewhere I kind of have either either seen or maybe I just you know too smart enough to capture this idea, right? In, uh, one of those things. Um, to me, it didn't come naturally. <laughs> and the fourth thing was, Nantosh, like the way you were specifying, right? Using additional array. Uh, I was thinking when I started coding that this would be the simplest, that I would just, you know, uh, take this element and uh, copy it accordingly. But this thing was, in, oops, this, uh, you know, equation was also a little like tricky to play with. Uh, like I had to pause and think about this. Uh, but is it the same this one as the mod? Like if you do the mod, then you don't have to do this. Uh, because, you, because at the end of the day, we are saying like how many to move, right? How many to move? Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, after right. I captured that point, I didn't even capture that k modulo n in the beginning. Uh, so that was good. Uh, but yeah, after that, this is very yeah similar to that. All right. Yeah, this is super important. Yeah, it's not yeah. An easy. Also, and that's true. Yeah, and I think that's where practice helps, right? Yeah. Uh, and when I say uh, these patterns, I'm talking about these patterns in this session. Uh, this is where I feel that uh, we should recognize some of the patterns, and uh, yeah, try to kind of. Uh, my hope is that if we have ten different types of you know, algorithms that we can apply on solving array related problems, we should at least have knowledge and done at least one problem on each of them uh, so that we are at least familiar with them, right? And not being in a position where I do 20 on four categories and I'm totally out of pace with six. So, mm -hmm. yeah. That's the idea. That makes sense. Let me go back to the slide. Any any questions on this? Um, I think just one quick comment I think for the last one, that, the fourth one that you have. Yeah, uh, we can get away with possibly having a memory auxiliary of k size as opposed to n size. Uh, 
Um, right now, I think what you have, you have, in, yeah. I mean, I think you're just creating a new array for sure, right? You're creating right, a new array for sure. Uh, one other aspect would be that you can create a new array for size k, and then copy all the k elements into it while you move the n minus k elements in the. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that is one easy approach to do. Yeah, right. Right, right, right. Yep. So in that you are uh, reducing the space also. Right. Yeah. Mm, interesting. Yeah. That's very good. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Do we have an approach? <laughs> So, DP, I'm sorry. So, what was your first solution? Uh, yeah, first, uh, my first two solutions were rotating by one step each time, but the only difference, let me see. So, um, so in this, in both first and second solution, I'm rotating. I think we can't see your screen. Or is it that? Yeah, you'll have to share your lead code screen. You're not sharing anything now. Yeah, thank you. Is it sharing? Should be sharing. Yeah, it's visible now. Okay. So yeah, in the first two, I just was rotating by one step each and I was doing okay iterations. So the only difference is in the first one, I was traversing the array from the beginning and here I was traversing from the end. Okay, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're going backwards. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And the uh, and the benefit I captured here was less bookkeeping, right? Because I just have to save the last element. Rest is all shifting. Mm -hmm. Like just overwriting here, right? I don't need to save any value yeah. because it's like an empty placeholder. Whereas if I traverse from the beginning, I have to do a some bookkeeping. Yeah, yeah. You're just moving the element ahead. In the second yep. one. Yeah. 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 So. Right. So yeah, like when I saw, I mean. Santosh, the problem you were covering this morning on dynamic programming, I mean, that was like pretty, you know, good, like food for thought. These seems to be very simple problems, but again, uh, coming back to the point that, and you will get a lot of complex problems in arrays, but I just wanted to take it more on a categorical uh, basis. Uh, right, but I don't think so. Any problem is simple problem, even if it is simple, <laughs> it can be. Yeah. Depending on the situation, it can be very difficult to solve sometimes. Yeah. So, yeah, I was just uh, making some notes here. I said, like, uh, you let me know if any time uh, the screen sharing is uh, screwed up. So, yeah, like I highlighted this, right? That's what I mean by pattern. Uh, less bookkeeping. How can I do shifting in an optimal way? Uh, reversal was optimal, uh, or was a clever solution. This, Things like that. So similar question you would see is, uh, we won't cover the solution, but if you think about remove duplicate elements in an array, right? So if you have something like one, two, two, right? And let's say five is repeated a couple of times, and you have 100, right? Um, removing duplicate elements uh, here would be another similar, like uh, simple to understand problem, but uh, it requires a bit of playing with indexes so that you can minimize the number of shifts that you have to do, right? So if I do, for example, um, if I start, if I want to delete two here and I move all of this data to the left, right? And then I do it, you know, for this different files I have, that would be a lot of unnecessary shifts. So I think there are approaches where you can first cut down this branch and you can say, I take out all the rest of the files here, 100, right? Um, and then you similarly do it for two. Uh, but I mean, think about it, but the point is that this problem also falls in a similar category where you need to showcase your proficiency in how do you play with indexes well. Um, there's another think, problem. Yeah. I think without deleting also we can do, right? You can maintain a, another index like J, right? And just check if A of I and A of I are A sorted, right? Given the condition. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, like you're saying, right? You maintain that kind of index variable where you tell that where to, you know, like move a sort of. Yeah, so, 
<laughs> in that case, if you find that if it is duplicate, then just copy the previous one and just increase the day. So we don't need to chop off any section of array in that case, right? Sure, sure. I mean, you probably might be already on spot, but uh, the idea is that when you, I mean, it requires the coming back to the pattern idea, right? It requires playing with indexes or uh, shifting things. Okay. Um, yeah. So another similar question is um, snapshot array on lead code. It's an interesting one where it says you're given an array, uh, you know, you try to do some operations on an array and you can take snapshot at any given time. And then you continue with doing some, you know, continue with the rest of the operations. And then at any point user can ask you, what was the value at a certain index for a certain snapshot, right? So, uh, not to go into details of this, uh, because I do want to keep a tap on uh, the activity stuff I want to do. But uh, the point is, um, these are the problems which require um, your practice on index uh, stuff. Um, so this is the, now one question. Um, so how is it like uh, 1030 is a hard deadline, right? Do we, uh, we tend to stop or do we sometimes extend it a bit? How is it like? Yeah, 10, 30 is good to have, but we go to 11, right? Okay. So, yeah. I have a little bit room here. I think I'm running a bit behind with the pace. So, 10, 30 is good, yeah. Yeah, so this is uh, another, uh, now this is coming to same pattern, right? Where you need to play with indexes, but this is getting into 2D arrays, right? The kind of questions you can get. Um, this question actually took me a little while to solve. Uh, I was able to come up with an algorithm very quickly, but uh, just to write it down took me a little while. Um, and uh, I did find solutions on the web which were more like concise and interesting, but I would still say that I at least could not come up with those ways of you know coding it. So I did differently, but, uh, and I can show you the solution, but would anybody like to quickly talk about, like this shows the direction we are going, but what are the kind of things you would address in this kind of regard? Um, yeah, so I would like to go this uh, layer by layer. I uh -huh. would try to start with my art outermost layer. It's like peeling the onion kind of approach. Right. So first we try to go on the, outmost periphery uh -huh. and then you keep on uh, like increasing your starting index by one and decreasing your end index by one so one, you right. get to the second layer yep. Yep. yeah that's yeah that makes sense right so what we are saying i didn't take another i think what you're explaining uh, another like four by four matrix would be helpful but i think like you're saying you are doing this parameter first and then you are increasing your start row start and column start, and then you're decreasing your, you know, boundaries like row length and column length. Um, that is definitely, but as you would see, right, uh, when you're traversing this outermost, right, any layer basically for that matter, what, what are the things you have to check, right? It's about the boundaries, right? Like the direction you are kind of going. So for example, from eight, I can go to seven, I can go to nine, right? Um, but there is a con logic I'm following, which makes me go from, you know, in a certain direction, like the sense of direction is important in this question. Um, and maybe I can just bring up a challenge. The, so rather than going into specific problems, what I hope I can convey by today's session is the patterns, right? If we can all agree and if we see the pattern that I'm talking about, that is the goal uh, today. So yeah, so this was the first one like uh, what um, I can't catch the name who was talking, but this is the solution we were talking about, right? I have the, oops. So I have the row start and column start and I have the, my boundaries here. And then I first start from, is there a way to, 
There should be a way to increase the font and not do this zoom thing. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. This one, yeah. Okay. This is good. Okay. Uh, so basically, here I'm just you know going from left. So when I was writing the solution, uh, in this one I had this idea. Okay, I have to check that I don't cross the row boundary, and then I have to switch direction. And I was getting confused by you know how do I make sure like how do I specify the sense of direction, right? And then I mean as I started coding and I saw some hints. Um, this, this kind of makes sense. Right? So I'm going from left to right here. And uh, so you can see how it requires a bit of, you know, attention to the index stuff that you're playing with. Um, there is nothing like specific um, uh, learning or a message that I can take from this problem, except the fact that, uh, yeah, this is one of those problems where I need a little bit of you know practice or how do I transform my idea or my algorithm into code, right? Um, so having, a, how do I capture the sense of direction in this? Another approach I thought of, I can get to code that, was if I can keep track of the visited, like if I can put a visit marker on my every cell, um, I think um, I can, I was thinking if that idea also I can use somewhere that, from three, I cannot go back to two because it's marked visited. I cannot go up because it's out of the boundary. I cannot go right. So I come down, something like that. Um, but I haven't tried that idea yet. Um, this was another solution I found, which I found much more intuitive. Uh, it's on coming from educative. So here it's talking about this, you know, conditions very clearly. It's talking about the sense of directions very clearly, right? Uh, one is like left to right and top to bottom. So, so I thought this was this was also good learning for me that uh, how to break my thought process into code. Like that. Um, this is more of a a bit of a practice based question. Um, something for me to pay attention to that I need to practice more. There is a similar question which says rotate a 2D matrix by 90. Um, a little more simpler than this, but again, playing with index. So just in the interest of time, I want to go a little fast here. Um, and we can continue. We can, if everybody finds this useful, we can have more sessions uh, you know, on these topics. So Pattern two is where you are supposed to find sub arrays. And this is one of the areas where the sliding window um, um, idea comes handy. Uh, so this is a common problem, right? You are given an array. This is even making it simpler. You have an array of positive numbers and you want to find the length of smallest array whose sum is greater than or equal to S. What I want to show here is not to go into, I'm sure everybody can uh, quickly come up with this idea here, right? So you're given an array and you want to find the sub array with some uh, greater than or equal to S. And the point is that I want to show the code I wrote. And this actually gave me, uh, this didn't pass the, all the test cases. Um, so coming back to, and. I think it captures the standard idea we would have for this kind of problem, where I'm just, uh, I should have shown, oh, I have this array here. So basically I'm just using the sliding window, right? I start my window from the first index and then I keep expanding it um, until I get a sum which is greater than or equal to seven. And at that point, I know I have that sub array and I check its size. If it's smaller than what I have, known so far, then I record it. Otherwise I continue, right? So my initial window is 215. And uh, once I record that, then I move, slide my window ahead. So from two, I move it to one. So now my window is one comma five, and then I keep moving the right part, right? End pointer. Um, everybody's, you know, 
understands this high level algorithm or yeah this, this is right, right please. yeah yeah so the point again i'm trying to reinforce here is how a simple algorithm which we would be able to articulate very easily sometimes it needs a little bit of practice and writing uh, right uh, how to manipulate the pointers and stuff like that and also i don't know like given in that in the interviews sometimes most of the times we don't run the actual code so as long as the logic is okay it may not like if there is a one off slip right it may not get caught but i think for your own proficiency it is important that we practice these problems and we know of these problems right like styles so so this was the and then i looked for the solution and i found it so much cleaner here and i'm like what was i doing like why was my code so long and uh, so yeah anyways so so sliding window is another one and if you check on lead code there are a lot of questions on you know about 20 questions on sub array um depends on what you want to pick up um there can there is one regarding the product um so so yeah um, that is that um the third pattern is two pointer based approach so like a simple problem like this right you're given uh, an array and you have a target sum you want to find the indices not the actual values but the indices of numbers which add up to the target right um a simple solution i'll go a bit fast because i really want to try that activity part which i think um, i hope that people would find it more engaging um and most of you would be familiar with the questions i'm going over um so let me know but if there are any you know anywhere you want me to stop so this is one solution one common thing is um i keep these numbers in a you know set and i start with the first number 2 and i know that if i want to find the total to 9 sum it up to 9 i need a 7 so i can quickly check in my set if i have a 7 right um of course that requires extra space right so this approach is handy two pointers um you can just use um in place algorithm to actually have Uh, you can sort the array like this one and then you can have one pointer here right and one to the end and you see the sum right 2 plus 15 17 it is higher than what you need so you can decrement your end pointer you can keep moving to the left and uh, at this point when you reach 7 you have found the match um, and that that's what you will output right uh, do, do we need a continuous indexes or it can be anywhere in the array uh this um, i mean uh, i believe it is anywhere in the array right yeah, anyway okay. anywhere okay. in the array yeah. and uh, do we need to use the set here uh, or do we need like, to i didn't capture the other what you said so in the two pointer do we need to use the set or how it will work we need to use point? the set right we just need two variables right pointing to two indices and then okay. we move the indexes that's where we save space right that's the advantage of this two pointers that we don't need extra like set or anything so dp in this uh, problem uh, there is no duplicates right yeah that would add another complexity yeah in this one actually here i have so you can have duplicates but you can only uh, use one yeah like the last one right 3 3 So you can have. Yeah. So DP, what will be the complexity with the two pointer? Yes. Uh, so let let's think about that, right? So if I want to find, um, uh, it can be order of n, right? Because if I come up to the closest, like seven comma eleven, right? Then I have traversed. Well, I it it is kind of traversing half of the array from either side, but. Would the asymptotically it will come out? Like yeah, it will have. It will be n square if it if we consider the two and seven at the end of the array. So. Yeah. Will it, be so it will be n square. Why it will be n square? Why? No, no, it won't be right. You are. Uh, so is the array? Yeah, it should not be. Is the array sorted? No, no. 
No, let's let's quickly take an example, right? So you have this two, seven, eleven, fifteen, right? And I wanted the sum of nine. So I start my first pointer from zero, and the last pointer from three, right? And I check that the sum is greater. So I decrement my last pointer two, right? And this is just like I'm not doing a nested loop, right? I am doing just one simple one loop, which is just covering my array, right, in a sequential form. Okay. Can we consider the example eleven, fifteen, seven, two? Mm. I'm just trying to miss, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. my doubt. Seven two. Yeah. So what do what's the sum we are looking for? Uh, nine. Nine, right? So here, my, uh, wait a second. So is this even? No. First, we need to sort this, right? First, we need no. to yeah, we'll have to sort. Require sorting. Yeah, that. Uh, yeah. That algorithm, right? Uh, you know whether it is greater or not. That only works in the sorting because if it is ascending or descending order, based on that we either expand one side or uh, you know from yep. the other side we need to yeah. address. Yeah. yeah. So we need to sort this uh, thing, and it will come down to the same. But if we use hash map in O of one, we can do O of n. Yeah. O of n. This, maybe hash map oh, this also. Yeah. Yeah. Sorting is n log n, right? Um, so that actually increases the complexity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Like if you look at the overall thing, but uh, I mean, maybe I was uh, I should say here. Let's say you're given a sorted, you know, array. In this question, it's not for sure because if you see example two, it is not. But uh, this pattern in general is helpful. That if you're given something sorted, right, then rather than using a set, right. This helps to save the space. Yeah, it's kind of a trade-off, I would say, right? Uh, because you are taking more time to compensate with space, or you can take, uh, you know, linear time with more space, right? It it's kind of, you know, depends on the oh, situation, true. right? Yeah. Because some of the so algorithms where compute time, yeah, 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 where you need to be, um, you know, think about which is uh, which is important for the. Algorithm, right? Uh, you can take yeah, more compute. Yeah, yeah, that's a very good point, right? And these are the kind of things that, when we speak up during the interview, they really highlight the, your knowledge and that you are aware of the trade-offs, right? Um, so, yeah, thanks for chiming in on that. Um, so, so so far we talked about three patterns. One was something that was index-related. So the problem is very simple, relatively simple to come up with an idea or an algorithm, but translating that algorithm to code is where you require some practice. And we talked about how to keep this shifting operation in mind. Uh, and the second idea we talked about was sliding window. Third was this two pointer. The fourth is, um, I don't know if I should put it in a separate category, but, uh, yeah, as I was doing questions, I thought this is interesting, but it can be merged. So when we are given, you know, arrays, right, paying attention to this characteristics, right, if it's sorted, or if it has duplicates or not, or what if it has negative numbers or not, those kind of things um, are helpful in definitely, like, if you look at, I mean, we won't have time to solve these questions right now, but if you even look at the first one, you, I came up with the solution and then when I noted that I can use the sorted aspect, it, it gives me better complexity. So, uh, yeah. So at this point, I'm really jumping through. Um, but uh, yeah, this, the last pattern I had was this question, which I thought this would be very easy. But when I looked at the solution, it was very like, clever idea that they had, right? Um, does anybody have it on the top of your head, like how to solve something like this? Yeah, I mean, two-pointer approach and keep a hash map. I think Raj's sub array sum with uh, sum zero, if we change the zero to minus one. Yeah, yeah, that was the idea I heard, right? We want to find the sub array with equal number of zeros and ones. 
So what uh, I noticed was that if you think of zero as minus one, right? And whenever you find like the sliding window sort of idea, right? You have minus one and one, the sum here is zero, right? So that means you have equal number. And then for example, in the second here, I find the first window zero and one have equal numbers. But now when I expand it, now uh, my sum is minus one again, right? So I know that is not equal, like I have one more zero. So, so just thinking of this idea of mapping zero to minus one uh, was something that if I know, I know, otherwise I can't jump on it in the interview. Um, so yeah. So, in this case, we could also use a prefix sum, right? Prefix sum. Um, and then just go through or no. Okay. Map would be better, right? Two pointer approach and at every point check the frequency of both zero. Yeah, that will be easy though. Yeah, that's true. Prefix sum, I think. No, oh, yeah. I don't. Okay. It will be the index, right, of the map. Okay, yeah. No, I think two pointer approach requires the sorted aspect, right? So if you sort here, you would lose the positioning. Like you want to find contiguous, right? So if I make it zero, zero, one, I would just lose, screw up the indexes. Well, I don't think, uh, you, I mean, the two point approach, you don't need to sort them, right? You just go one by one and you count up the previous, how the, the uh, previous, previous zero, how many number and previous one, you know, how many number? Yeah, yeah but, but the idea of two pointer is like to traverse it from two different directions, right? At least the terminology. You can go from one direction. One side also, yeah. Right. I think Shashank yeah. was saying that, right? Uh, okay. You put an indexes and then you go from the left side, both of them, correct? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. But the most optimized one is that what Shashank was Yeah, Arshil said, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So that's, that minus that's one category. Yeah. So that minus one is kind of falling into the prefix sum, right? So if you yeah, if yeah. we convert yeah. minus one, then potentially we're looking for zeros, right? Yeah. Right. Like yeah, yeah, just yeah. Add with zero sum. Correct. But in this case, uh, if you use minus sum, you are not using an extra space, right? Prefix yeah. sum, you will have to have an extra space. But uh, no. once we are done with that I think we'll have to use that hash map, no, and the prefix sum. No, I think that would be a little different approach. I don't you know. Have to use hash map to check like when did you see your last zero, and again if you Absolutely. see a one two zero, that will show that the uh, the oh, I see what you're yeah. two two zeros cancelled. So you'll have so to we'll, use that. We'll, yeah, we'll take a running sum which would uh, store the prefix sum, and then we'll check with uh, when did we last see that particular sum. Yeah, or else you'll have to keep going back, right? Yeah, hash map is a uh, better like, I think what you're talking about very quickly before we move on here is like something like this 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, right? So now here you see some 0, and then at this point again, for after you traverse this, you see the sum 0, right? So, right, right, right. Yeah. track of yeah. index, yeah. Why, why do we need to uh, use the hash map? Because the previous, let's say we at one right now and we look at the previous zero and then exactly only one previous zero, right? Suppose mm -hmm. there's some previous zero way before that, but we don't use it. We yeah, only count the consecutive one. No, but like if you have something like this, Leon, then we are, this is not equal number of zeros and ones, right? Yeah. No, let's say, suppose that I'm on the, uh, the, the one, you know, from the last. Uh -huh. Yeah. The previous, yeah, the, the previous one from the last. Uh -huh. So I only look, look at the previous, previous two zero, right? But the pre, that's the previous two zero is the only one I care about. I don't care about the you know previous two zero before that. No, because you want to find the maximum length, right, of contiguous. So let's say if if your previous thing, right, like here, right? If you had something like, or maybe let me just add this. I, I had this subarray, right, with equal numbers of zeros and ones. 
which was of length of uh, six, right? Oh, okay, okay, got it. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Okay, so now we have what, like 20 minutes in an ideal case, and um, but I do need at least. So we have discussed this. So th these were the like the five patterns I thought. But uh, as I was doing it, I think there can be more like which can kind of get into dynamic programming and we definitely need, uh, you know, more practice on each of them. But uh, if you have less time, then how do you practice at least few of them? That is the idea. And what I want to do now is, uh, let me see uh, how many of us are here? 29. Um, so I was, can I have a show of hands for um, each one of you here? So what I'm planning to do is have breakout sessions, right? Where um, we will uh, have groups of like two people each in each group. And we'll, I'll share one question uh, related to arrays and we can either play the mock interview style, right? If you're comfortable with that, or if you're not comfortable with that, you can also, uh, you know, just do it in a casual discussion style. Um, but just to mention that this is not something to be, think of it as intimidated because it's not going to be recorded, right? Each of you will go in the breakout room and none of this will, like if you're concerned about that, I'm not prepared, uh, and how will it showcase none of uh, nothing like that. So I'm just thinking of it as the whole idea of doing this session was to reinforce how we need sometimes practice and to, to actually identify our blind spots. Because when I started doing these questions, I was like, oh, I know this question, fine. And then I started coding and I'm like, okay, taking some time. So I am hoping that, I mean, this is an experiment, right? So we can, uh, try this today and we can, I can split you all in groups of two and we can just go over one question, come back after 20 minutes um, and share like, was it too easy or, you know, did you stumble on some areas or stuff like that? Uh, does it make sense? Okay, I'm taking silence as a yes, because that's what I want to hear. So otherwise you have to speak out. Um, let me, um, so can I have actually, so this task would require everybody to be actually like not to multitask, right? Because you will be in a room with, you know, two of you. So can I have a show of hands here? I think there is a raise hand feature probably. Is it there or not? I don't know. Can I? I thought there is a face hand feature or something by which I can get confirmation that people I are. I think on the participant, there's a raise hand feature. Oh, yeah. Okay, great. So, yeah, I, uh, I see some of you. <laughs> so, um, yeah, if you can raise your hand to confirm that you are available, you can, you know, allocate next 20 minutes um, for this. Because if you're not available, then I would, you know, if you have something else to take care of, then uh, I mean, I can't, if I assign you to a room, then other person won't have a partner. So, so I see a few people raising hands, but majority not, so I, can... Hey, DP, I can't raise a hand, but can you include me as well? Yeah, yeah, sure, of course. Yeah, just speak up, you know, if, if you're not like not showing up that option or anything. So it, it should be really fun. And I just want to reinforce that this is not something to be intimidated about. So don't, don't just hesitate for that. Um, Okay, I see some people, not everybody. So I guess I'll just start by allocating rooms and if- Why don't you add everyone? So who- Yeah, I will add everyone. It's just that I am I was concerned that 
if I people land in a room where there is no other person or the other person is not participating, then uh, let's see. Let so in that case, there will be discussion, right? So it's okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'll start the, you know, I'll launch you into rooms and I'll share one question um, uh, and you will have 20 minutes. So, and, and just to clear one logistic, uh, you can, if you're comfortable being the interviewee, just step up. If not, you can just randomly pick one person whose name, whatever comes in the top of the list. Um, and uh, yeah, ping me if you have questions. So, breakout room, let's see. Uh, create, I would say we have 23 people. Uh, 11. I'm doing this for the first time. Can you guys still hear me? Hey, can you guys hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. I was in the room, but only me in the room. So, yeah, same yeah. with me. There was no one in my yeah. room. That is the problem I was expecting. <laughs> so people seemed like they were not aware. I didn't see the question actually. Did you? You know? yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I think this is something the I have to try separately then. So. <laughs> Yeah, the uh, question, question, it flashed and then immediately flashed the other message and both messages went, you know, after a few seconds. Oh, right, right. Yeah. yeah. So uh, the, your question flashed and I was reading and then, you know, uh, another <laughs> case of the saying that, did you get it? And uh, that, that oh. basically removed the first one. And uh, okay. yeah, that's what so is, is it going to appear only for a few seconds? That is what you're saying? Uh, Actually, I don't know. I didn't. So, uh, one thing I was wondering why the messages from the host is not coming on the chat, right? It's coming on the top. If it would have been coming the chat to the breakout room. No, no actually, when I was doing it, it was showing up like broad. It, it works, I think, a little differently. I had to broadcast mm. to everyone in the room. Um, okay. 
and the broadcast messages are uh, you know overlapping right so it's kind of a stack <laughs> yes, yeah i guess <laughs> all right so let's do it here then we'll just is it possible to share the blade code question number so we can yeah. see the description in detail yes. there yes of course so let me bring that up uh, give me one second Oh, uh, problem number seven one three. So maybe can we have some sort of a, like the mock interview style here then, uh, and everybody can just uh, if if one person like Santosh you or uh, who else like. Whoever is comfortable, right? If we can try, I could be an interviewee. Sorry. Uh, you no. Know, what's okay? So you were saying? No, I was thinking. Of, like initial uh, idea was that uh, we have this, you know, uh, mock interview or groups of two that didn't work. So. Either we can just discuss this problem if we are going to keep it to 10 30 uh, quickly, or if you want to do like, I don't know if, what people are up to, like if you want to spend time. So if we just look at the problem now, okay, so you have shared the problem, right? And then we again go to the breakout rooms and we just spend at least 15 minutes and come back. Will that be fine? At least we all have a discussion, separate discussions. Yeah, sure. That would be good for what me. The problem I see in breakout session is like people suddenly, I, now I see 23 people, but then when I did the breakout session, I suddenly see the number drop to seven and I was confused what happened. So, so we go to the breakout room, then, you know, only me in the room. Okay, so let's do it this way quickly, right? And then rest of time, even if you don't have a partner, right? If you find a partner in the room, both of you are available, you can discuss. Otherwise, you can just go on lead code, try this for 15 minutes, right? Mm -hmm. When I say try, actually, you know, think of algorithm, write code, see how far you can go, and we can come back in 15 minutes. Okay. Sound good? Yeah, that's, that's fine. Okay, so let me just restart the breakout rooms then. Just one, one more time confirming it is 713. Is that correct, DB? Uh, let me check. Who or whatever you put in the comment. It's on the comment. Yeah, yeah, in the comment. Okay, yeah, yeah, 713. Okay. I am just checking the thing. So 10 minutes, 15 minutes, what do you think? 15 is good, I think for coding, yeah. Uh, allow move all. Okay, so this is.
Yeah. So I just feel that sometimes we find the question reasonable, but when we start coding and in that pressure of like finishing in a timed way, it gets a little complicated. Um, so yeah, but overall, did do you think it was an, you know, we can try out more? Like this was a very like experimental thing. Uh, even the logistics were a little tricky, um, but of the breakout rooms and stuff. But uh, if, I don't know, like if overall, like people are, some people are saying, yeah. They, I mean, uh, I have a suggestion like for yeah. that, to do it in an interview uh, perspective. So, <laughs> Uh, like uh, in an interview perspective, we'll, uh, we'll initially discuss on the brute force and then we'll go to the optimal solution. And then we discuss about the, uh, 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 you know, uh, performance and all those things, right? So I think 15 minutes is too short for that, actually. Yeah, to discuss on the coding. Again, we need to code on top of that. So, yeah, uh, definitely. I think you're right. So today was literally like, a, you know, a test run. Yeah, um, I know. Yeah. Just can, like you said, you know, I would say I was thinking about 25 minutes because if yeah. you look at some of the interviews, right? Like, uh, I, I, yeah, that is pretty much what the time you get 25, 30 minutes. Um, but yeah, 15 minutes for short. Uh, and, and the other idea of today's goal was, you know, just to get a glimpse of sometimes how tricky it can be to actually code it, you know, even though you understand the logic, uh, just to reinforce the patterns idea that I was proposing. Uh, but yeah, so so that is one overall I'm hearing that people kind of like, I mean, given the time frame, we can switch and stuff like that. Uh, any other any other ideas, any other feedback or before we move on to the other questions I have? Okay, so the other thing I wanted to ask was like, what was your experience doing it? Like, did you feel like even from coding perspective, right? If you started, you know, coding part, I don't know if you were brainstorming the idea, uh, you know, it was a short time, but what was your experience? Did you feel it was a useful exercise for, you know, checking your coding, you know, proficiency or what were the roadblocks kind of, where did you get stuck if you did? Yeah, We're not we even... Got, uh, yeah. Uh, do the coding yet we still do the brute force and okay. you know, i think it, it help it keeps some yeah. time pressure yeah. yeah yeah no actually that trick here leon is you know we only discuss the brute force right and keep on discussing the better approaches and so when you get on a better approach then only code mm -hmm. so then actually it yeah. because that would be very optimal solution right so you don't have to code the brute force. If you code the brute force, then it will take long time. Yeah, yeah. Brute force is definitely not the best time to jump on coding. But Santosh, coming back to the idea of if, if we would have done it 25 minutes, then the expectation is that in an interview, you have to cover it like end to end, right? You have to move fast through brute, pro, brute force thought and then get to the optimized algorithm and start coding, right? Mm -hmm. uh, something along those lines. Maybe I can just quickly show you what I did and I realized sure. yeah. that more practice would definitely help. Uh, yeah, I was initially playing with the logistics, so I didn't start on time, but uh, you and know. The one good thing about uh, DP, just to add, right? Normally in the interview, only 2% participates, but here, if you think about it, it's like a multiple people are participating, right? Even though exactly, you know, that like, the, uh, exactly. it's kind that of a, the, you know, multiplier effect, right? Even though people do not come up with a solution, but that actually gives discussing and uh, brainstorming the problem is halfway yes. through, right? Yes, it kind of puts you in a spot, right? Yeah. One of the things I have uh, observed, like we have this mock interview series, which is great, you know, for the people. It, it, it uh, benefits people more when you're participating versus when you are just being an observer. So this kind of model, uh, we can even do it, you know, otherwise like it helps you, it pushes you to think, right? So, yep. yeah. So yeah, it was just like, okay, the index part is making me think now here. So this is where I kind of was coming around. So here we have to, I noticed we have to find the number, right? We don't have to find the maximum length or anything. We have to count the number of subarrays with this condition, right? the product should be less than K. So I started with, uh, you know, uh, the sliding uh, window approach, right? And I said, uh, 
I did the took the initial sum and while product is less than k, every time a product is less than k, I have to increment a count, right? So when I am at 10, it counts as one subarray, right? Then I keep expanding the window. I go on to five. Product is still less than k. So that counts as another subarray. And I keep doing that until I hit a product which is greater. And then I would jump out, you know, of this loop and I would increment my, I would move my window, uh, slide my window in the beginning, right? So that's where I was at. Uh, oh, yeah, but I didn't finish though. Does anybody? Yeah, this, this is good, yeah. Yeah. So you are actually incrementing the count here. And you said like when it exceeds K, so your right, then product... I Okay, but yeah. where do you, uh, because when oh, now I you, should have... also... you have to divide that by K. Uh, right, product right, by right. Right. CP, right? And you didn't initialize CP too. Oh, there is a lot going on here. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I just know. Yeah. So that... one, at least we have that code. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some practices definitely would help. But yeah. So I have to kind of divide product by the you know initial number here, the sliding part, yeah. But I mean, you know, so this was kind of the pace, but... Uh, um, so one thing I was thinking, um, you know, a slight optimization, I'm not sure. Like if there is a zero actually involved, we know the product is going to be zero, right? Uh, even though we bring our left pointer. So at that time, the left pointer can straight no, away jump. The number cannot be zero here. I should. But, oh, okay, okay, got it, got it. Okay, it is greater than zero, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but actually, that's a great point. If yeah. there is a zero, we need to directly jump yep. to the uh, first point after of zero, right? Yeah, yeah. Correct, correct. That's a, you know, let's say if this was not given, right? Usually this is not. Yeah, because in the interview, right, uh, <laughs> yeah. we need to extract the information. Exactly. But okay. even if it's zero, then we still need to count. Uh, let's say in this case, we have 10 and zero. Yeah. But 10 still qualify, right? 10 will qualify, but when I start expanding my window, right? Suddenly drop to yeah, everything will be zero. So, whatever before zero, we have to count it, and whatever after yeah. zero, we have to count it. Yeah, you have to count 10. It's just that when, how do I play with my you know search? Like, I can't just keep expanding this, it will stay zero, right? But it will be a very difficult problem, right? If you add that zero, yeah, I, I think there is some problem there with negative uh, product. If negative comes, we have to consider if two negatives that will, uh, you know. Oh, I think up. the two negative part is, I think, somewhere. Where yeah, like yeah, there is another question. Maximum, you know, product. When you're correct. maximum product, mm -hmm. that's where it helps. And if it's one negative, then it will reduce it. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so I. Oh, one, one of my problem, you know, I want to share uh, oh. is, you know, reading the question, I, I didn't. I, you know, when I read the question, I thought it they're gonna return the, the array of all, you know, the, all the qualified like, uh, array, yeah, like, yeah, like that. Yeah. So I will focus on doing that, you know? Yeah, I should have, uh, you know, read the another, question like, more you know, carefully instead of. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes actually it happens in the interview also. If some, in our mind, you know, we are trying to maybe think of something, you know, what the out expected output is. So it can be a little confusing, but just something. To kind yeah, of when I look at it, I say it, it cannot be lock and solution. It has to be something bigger than lock and. and... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think first of all, 15 minutes was definitely a test run. Uh, it kind of puts a lot of pressure because suddenly you are thinking of brute force, you're thinking of algorithm. Uh, but if people are liking this idea, I think we can do it in a more optimized way uh, next time. Um, and uh, and feel free to share your feedback on the channel. Like, uh, yeah, so I will stop sharing here. Um, okay, so I think that was pretty much what I had. Um, uh, we can, we can, I mean, if you won't have any feedback now, feel free to, you know, speak up. Uh, 
otherwise even during the channel on the channel it's fine uh ppt i would definitely uh, i can share uh, it was very you know brief so but if you find it helpful sure yeah it it was good sidhi pia yeah. okay at least we enjoyed the last problem <laughs> that is what i was hoping like <laughs> yeah i got a very good partner so he helped me so that was very good <laughs> yeah. and it kind of keeps you on your toes right so yeah yeah, yeah. so all right okay. So, okay thank you then we would um, so uh, do you want to discuss what to bring next time